What's up? I'm Mike, N2MAK. Don't believe what you read online or what you see online because the Radioddity DB20G and similar radios like the Retivis RA25 or the Anytone 779 are programmable now with Chirp. Let me show you how. All right, let me just get this out of the way real quick. Radioddity sent me the this radio right here. This is the DB20G, free of charge. They sent it along with the uh, cup holder mount too uh, for my, my review and uh, evaluation. I'm gonna be doing a more in-depth review on my likes and dislikes for this radio in a separate video. Instead, this video is gonna focus on programming by Chirp. I'll show you real quick how to do that. Uh, but more importantly, kind of show you why this is such a welcome feature for the Radioddity radio, but also similar ones like the uh, Anytone 779 and the Retivis RA25. The radio comes with its own programming cable, which has worked fine for me on both Windows and Mac. It uses the mic jack, so all you need to do is simply unplug the microphone and plug in the programming cable, and we're ready to go. All right, so to get started, uh, let's click to download from the radio, and we're just going to want to make sure that you have the correct port selected. Uh, vendor for the radio is Radioddity, and then the uh, DB20G is what we select the other radios are in there, um, the Anytone and the Retivis. Once you click to uh, download from the radio, it'll simply say reading on the uh, radio screen. You'll see it downloading here in Chirp. And it doesn't take long at all, maybe like 30 seconds or so for it to uh, download from the radio. But quick tip, do this in advance when you're first getting started with the radio out of the box when it's set up for GMRS, regardless if you're going to keep using it for GMRS or you're going to modify it for the hand bands like I have. Um, you definitely want that initial code plug, uh, so to say, uh, for the radio, uh, just in case. Now, I'll show you the settings real quick and a couple settings that I've liked to uh, use and, and tweak. Uh, the squelch off, I prefer that when you push the monitor button, it keeps the squelch off until you push it again. And it's nice that that radio has this feature instead of having to hold it down. Um, there are some stuff with the uh, tail eliminators and, and things that I'm not too familiar with. I do prefer the, um, the channel names to display. And so I've selected that. You can alter if you want to see in the sub band the, the voltage or some other things. I don't care much about that. You can adjust the backlight levels, and um, you can certainly put in your call sign or something else for the uh, startup. Um, I've disabled the beep, so I don't hear that every time I push. There's some other settings as well with respect to priority channels and the scan. I haven't done a whole lot with those yet, so I don't have much to add uh, with respect to that. And the bottom tab for radio info, you can see at the top radio mode, I have selected here UHF 400 to 490, VHF 136 to 174. There's plenty of other videos that show you how you can do this mod uh, from the uh, front panel. Now, I already have this programmed with a number of the repeaters and channels that I use locally. And that was easy to do because I could do that in Chirp and I could copy frequencies from other radios that I have programmed. But instead, what we're going to do here is use the uh, features in Chirp and we can go in and we can select uh, channels in bulk um, from different services. In this case, we'll start off with the GMRS channels, which have been removed and I can easily copy and add those all within just a matter of seconds. I'll speed this up real quick because I think you get the point, but you can easily add a whole number of channels in bulk from other directories. So we'll go through, we'll add MERS, uh, U.S. Marine, VHF channels, um, U.S. Canadian Railroad channels. We have the space. We can easily add all those in and uh, take advantage of it and then we have those channels available if we want to do uh, scanning. Now that you've got all the channels in there, you've got the settings that you want. You just need to go up and select to upload to radio. Again, make sure you got the correct port selected. And once you do this, uh, it'll start to write to the radio. Uh, it will say that it is uh, writing. 
on the radio screen and display. This, again, only takes a few seconds for it to go through and do it a little bit quicker than reading from the radio. And there we go. It's done. And another quick tip, definitely after you uh, do this, you're going to want to go up and click to uh, save, you know, save a copy of the original default configuration. And uh, each time you make changes to it, it's a good idea to save a copy as well. All right, radio is powered back on and double check. The channels that we added in there have now been added uh, correctly to the radio. So they're now available for us to listen, to monitor, to scan. All right, that'll do it. Uh, real quick video. Um, this is definitely not a deep dive into Chirp. There's plenty of other videos out there that can uh, walk you through that if you're interested in learning more. This was more so just to get it out there for those that own this radio and the ones like it. Or if you're considering picking up uh, this radio or one of the ones like it, uh, knowing that it's now programmable by Chirp, I think, is a huge selling point. If you look at any of the previous reviews on YouTube or read them on Amazon, you're going to see it mentioned the radio is not programmable by Chirp. That's not true anymore. Using Chirp, like you just saw, makes it so easy to set up a new radio. Uh, before uh, I recorded this video, when I first set it up, I was easily able to copy my repeaters and channels from other radios right over to this one using Chirp. I can add channels easily in Chirp with the, the feature uh, that I just used, copying and pasting GMRS, MERS, uh, marine frequencies, you name it. This radio is going to hold up the 500 channels, and um, I figured, why not? Let, let, let's add them in there, scan around, and maybe I'll see see what, what gets picked up. I, I think this radio has more memory channels than any of the other ones that I have. I'll have to double check that. But, um, but yeah, it makes it real easy. And then lastly, I'm a Mac user. Uh, I have a Windows computer for some of the ham software that just does not work on Mac. But the fact that Chirp is supported cross-platform, um, is, is really awesome. It makes it super easy for, uh, for users like me. So, um, I think it's, like I said just moments ago, it's a, it's a, it's a great selling point now for these radios. I think they're a good budget or entry level option. And the fact that you can now program them in Chirp just makes it that much easier and that much better. If you have any comments or questions, by all means, please leave them down below. I'll do my best to respond. And if you made it this far, please consider clicking like and subscribing to my channel. I'm Mike, N2MAK73.